The 1993 World Series was the 90th edition of Major League Baseball's Championship Series and the conclusion of the 1993 Major League Baseball season. A best-of-seven playoff series, it pitted the defending champions and American League AL champion Toronto Blue Jays against the National League NI champion Philadelphia Phillies. With Toronto ahead three games to two in the series, but trailing game six by a score of six to five with one out in the bottom of the ninth inning, with runners on first and second base and a count of two balls and two strikes, Joe Carter hit a game-winning three-run home run to win game six by a score of eight to six and the series four games to two for Toronto, its second consecutive championship the first team to repeat as champions since the 1977-78 Yankees. This was only the second series concluded by such a home run the first was in the 1960 World Series on a Bill Mazieroski home run for the Pittsburgh Pirates, and the first such occasion where a come-from-behind walk-off home run won a World Series. It was the last series win of a sports title in a major professional sport by a Canadian team until Toronto FC won the Supporters' Shield and the MLS Cup of Major League Soccer in the 2017 season. Larry Anderson was the only member of the 1993 Phillies to also play for them in the 1983 World Series, although Darren Dalton was a late-season call-up in 1983, but only served as the bullpen catcher in the World Series. Fittingly, in Dalton's first-ever MLB game, he was a catcher for Larry Anderson. Topic. Summary Al Toronto Blue Jays 4 vs. NI Philadelphia Phillies 2 Topic Matchups Topic Game 1 The series first game sent two staff aces Kurt Schilling for Philadelphia and Juan Guzman for Toronto against one another. The result was less than a pitcher's duel, however, as both teams scored early and often. The Phils struck first in the top of the first on RBI singles by John Cruck and Darren Dalton aided by two walks. In the bottom of the second, after two singles and a wild pitch, Paul Molitor's single and Tony Fernandez's ground out scored a run each to tie the game. The Phillies took a 3-2 lead in the third when Mariano Duncan hit a lead-off single, stole second and scored on Crux single, but the Blue Jays tied the game in the bottom half when Devin White reached third on left fielder's Milt Thompson's error and scored on Joe Carter's sacrifice fly. The Phillies retook the lead in the fifth inning when Duncan tripled with one out and scored on a wild pitch, but White hit a home run to tie the game in the bottom of the inning. The next inning, John Olerud hit a home run of his own to put Toronto on top 5-4. To in the seventh, after two one-out singles, Schilling was relieved by David West, who allowed an RBI double to White and two-run double to Roberto Alomar to pad Toronto's lead to 8-4. To the Phillies got a run in the ninth when Kruk hit a lead-off single, moved to second on an error and scored on Jim Eisenreich's two-out single, but Dwayne Ward got Ricky Jordan to fly out to end the game as Toronto won 8-5. To Al Letta pitched two and two-thirds innings—in relief of an erratic Juan Guzman, who walked four in just five innings—for his first World Series win. Kruk had three hits for Philadelphia. Alomar made an amazing diving catch on a Lenny Dykstra looper behind first in the top of the fifth. Topic. Game 2 In the second game of the series, ALCS MVP Dave Stewart was on the mound for Toronto and Terry Mulholland started for Philadelphia. Philadelphia jumped out to an early lead. In the third inning, after two walks, John Cruck and Dave Hollins hit back to back RBI singles, then Jim Eisenreich followed with a three run home run to deep right center to put them up 5 0. Toronto got on the scoreboard in the fourth inning courtesy of a Joe Carter two-run home run to left, then cut the Phillies' lead to 5-3 to in the sixth when Roberto Alomar singled with two outs and scored on Tony Fernandez's double, but the Phillies got that run back in the seventh on Lenny Dykstra's home runoff of Tony Castillo. Toronto cut the lead to 6-4 to in the eighth when Paul Molitor hit a lead-off double off of Roger Mason, stole third and scored on John Alirad's sacrifice fly off of Mitch Williams. Alomar then walked and stole second, but was caught stealing third to end the inning. Williams then pitched a scoreless ninth as the Phillies won to tie the series. 
Mulholland pitched five and two-thirds innings, allowing three earned runs, for the win. Topic. Game 3 For Toronto, Pat Hentgen faced off against Philadelphia starter Danny Jackson, who had pitched in the 1985 and 1990 World Series, in Game 3. Hentgen pitched a strong six innings, allowing just a single run, and the Toronto offense took care of the rest. In Jackson's previous postseason start against the Blue Jays, he had recorded a shutout in the 1985 American League Championship Series, but he was not nearly as effective in this game. After a lead-off single and walk in the first, Paul Molitor's two-run triple and Joe Carter's sacrifice fly put Toronto up 3-0. Molitor's two-out home run in the third made it 4-0 Blue Jays, who then loaded the bases on three straight singles, but Jackson struck out Ed Sprague to end the inning without further damage. In the sixth, Roberto Alomar hit a lead-off single off a Ben Rivera, stole second and third and scored on Tony Fernandez's sacrifice fly. The Phillies got on the board in the bottom of the inning on Jim Eisenreich's RBI single with two on via two walks. In the top of the seventh, Ricky Henderson hit a lead-off double, then scored on Devin White's triple. After a walk and strikeout, Alomar's RBI single made it 7-1 Toronto. Bobby Thigpen relieved Rivera and walked Fernandez before Sprague's sacrifice fly made it 8-1 Blue Jays. Three straight one-out singles by Milt Thompson, Lenny Dykstra and Mariano Duncan off of Danny Cox in the bottom of the inning made it 8-2 Blue Jays. Molitor hit a lead-off single in the ninth off of Larry Anderson before Alomar's triple and Fernandez's single scored a run each to make it 10-2 Blue Jays. Dwayne Ward allowed a lead-off home run in the bottom of the inning to Thompson before retiring the next three hitters to end the game and give the Blue Jays a 2-1 series lead. Toronto manager Cito Gaston was once again faced with an unusual and difficult decision prior to game time. As the series switched to the National League ballpark, Gaston could not use his designated hitter, Paul Molitor, unless he played him in the field. This was not unfamiliar to Gaston, as he had to do the same thing one year prior to keep Dave Winfield in his lineup. Molitor's hitting kept him in the lineup over John Olerud for the games in Philadelphia, where he would play first base. The decision was potentially controversial as Olerud had led the American League in batting over the season with a .363 average, moreover, Molitor was the less sure-handed fielder. Molitor, however, put these concerns to rest, going 3-for-4, hitting a home run in the third inning and driving in three runs, while playing adequately at first base. <laughs> Game 4 In the fourth game of the series, Toronto sent Todd Stottlemyre to the mound while Philadelphia countered with Tommy Green. It had been a rainy day in Philadelphia, which waterlogged the aging turf at Veterans Stadium, making for particularly slippery conditions. Toronto loaded the bases in the first on double, walk and single. Paul Molitor was walked to force in a run before Tony Fernandez's single scored two more. In the bottom half, three walks loaded the bases for the Phillies before Jim Eisenreich walked to force in a run, then Milt Thompson's three-run triple put the Phillies up 4-3. Lenny Dykstra's two-run home run next inning made it 6-3 Phillies. In the top of the third, after a one-out walk and single, consecutive RBI singles by Tony Fernandez and Pat Borders cut the lead to 6-5. Roger Mason relieved Green and after a ground out and walk, Devin White's two-run single put Toronto up 7-6, but the Phillies tied the game in the fourth when Dykstra doubled with two outs off of Al Letter and scored on Mariano Duncan's single. Next inning, after a lead-off single, Darren Dalton's two-run home run put the Phillies up 9-7. After another single, Thompson's RBI double made it 10-7, then Dykstra's second home run of the game made it 12-7 Phillies. In the sixth, White hit a lead-off double before scoring on Roberto Alomar's single off of David West. After a single and hit by pitch loaded the bases, Fernandez's RBI ground out cut the Phillies' lead to 12-9, but they added a run in the bottom half when Dave Hollins hit a lead-off double off of Tony Castillo and scored on Thompson's two-out single. Next inning, a hit by pitch to Dalton with the bases loaded made it 14-9 Phillies. In the eighth, though, after a one-out single and walk-off of Larry Anderson, Molitor's RBI double made it 14-10 Phillies. 
Fernandez then hit an RBI single off of Mitch Williams. A walk loaded the bases, then after a strikeout, Ricky Henderson's single and White's triple scored two runs each to put Toronto ahead 15–14. Dwayne Ward earned the save, retiring the last four Phillies batters. Three new World Series records were set, including the longest game 414, most total runs scored in a single game 29, and most runs scored by a losing team 14. Also, Charlie Williams became the first African American to serve as the home plate umpire for a World Series game. Two death threats directed towards Mitch Williams were phoned into Veterans Stadium as soon as it became evident that Williams was going to be the losing pitcher of Game 4. Williams was not aware of the death threats until after Game 5. Topic. Game 5 The offenses were due for an off day, and it came in Game 5 courtesy of a Kurt Schilling Philadelphia and Juan Guzman Toronto pitching duel. Schilling shut down the previously unstoppable Toronto offense, limiting the team to just five hits, no extra base hits although catcher Pat Borders had two hits and no runs in a complete game shutout. It was only the second time all season that Toronto had been shut out. Guzman pitched well in a losing effort, allowing only two runs and five hits in seven innings of work. The two runs scored as a result of scrappy base running play from the Philadelphia offense. In the first inning, Lenny Dykstra walked, stole second, moved to third on a Pat Borders throwing error, and scored on a John Cruck ground out. In the second inning, Darren Dalton opened with a double, took third on a ground out, and scored on a Kevin Stocker single. As it turned out, it was the final postseason baseball game in Veterans Stadium. It was demolished after the 2003 season. Topic. Game 6 The sixth game in the series was a rematch between Game 2 starters Terry Mulholland and Dave Stewart, who would have similar results. Toronto scored in the bottom of the first with a run scoring Paul Molitor triple after a walk, Joe Carter sacrifice fly to score Molitor, and Roberto Alomar RBI single after a double. The Phillies got on the board in the fourth when Darren Dalton doubled with two outs and scored on Jim Eisenreich's single, but the Blue Jays got that run back in the bottom of the inning on when Alomar hit a lead-off double, moved to third on a ground out and scored on Ed Sprague's sacrifice fly. Paul Molitor added a home run in the fifth inning while the Toronto fans were chanting, MVP, for Paul, bringing the score to 5-1 to for Toronto. Molitor became the first player in World Series history to have at least two home runs, two doubles, and two triples. In the seventh inning, Philadelphia fought back with five runs. After a walk and single, Lenny Dykstra hit a three-run home run to knock Stewart out of the game. Mariano Duncan singled off reliever Danny Cox, stole second, and scored on Dave Hollins's RBI single to tie the game. A walk and single loaded the bases before Pete and Cavillier hit a sacrifice fly to put the Phillies up 6-5. Philadelphia closer Mitch Williams came on to pitch the bottom of the ninth with his team clinging to a 6-5 lead. After beginning the inning by walking Ricky Henderson, Williams tried to counter Henderson's speed by using a slide-step style of pitching delivery. Prior to the game, Williams had never used the slide-step delivery in his career, and this may have cut back on his velocity. The walk to Henderson was followed by a Devon White flyout and a single by Paul Molitor that moved Henderson to second. Joe Carter came up next and, with the count 2-2, he hit a three-run home run to win the game and the World Series. Just before the fifth and final pitch to Joe Carter, CBS Sports announcer Tim McCarver commented that Carter, relatively unproductive in the series to date, looked awkward and uncomfortable at the plate. The same pitch allowed Blue Jays radio announcer Tom Cheek the opportunity to utter his famous, Touch em all, Joe, quote, when Joe Carter clinched the series. Carter joined Bill Mazieroski as one of the only two players to win a World Series with a home run in the bottom of the ninth inning. Carter was actively involved in the final play of the World Series for the second year in a row. In the previous year, Carter caught the final out as first baseman after relief pitcher Mike Timlin fielded Otis Nixon's bunt. Taking the 1993 ALCS into account where he caught the final out in the outfield, he had been involved in the final play of three straight postseason series. 
American League president Dr. Bobby Brown presented the World Series trophy instead of the Commissioner of Baseball. This event also occurred in the year before. Topic: <laughs> Aftermath the Blue Jays became the second expansion team to win two World Series championships, following the New York Mets in 1986. The Florida Marlins would win their second title in 2003, and the Kansas City Royals would accomplish the same feat in 2015. With the Montreal Canadiens winning the 1993 Stanley Cup Finals five months earlier, it marked the only time Canadian teams won multiple league championships among the four major North American team sports in a calendar year. Mitch Williams would later place blame on himself for the series loss. Mitch Williams on his feelings about surrendering the home run to Joe Carter Williams would be traded that offseason by the Phillies to the Astros. Both teams would experience absences from the postseason. The Phillies did not return to the postseason until 2007, or appear in another World Series until their championship season of 2008, bringing the city of Philadelphia its first championship since the 76ers swept the 1983 NBA Finals. The general manager of the Blue Jays, Pat Gillick, was general manager of the Phillies team that won the 2008 World Series. The Blue Jays did not qualify for the playoffs again until the 2015 season. This was the last time a team from Toronto made it to a championship round of one of the four major sports until the Toronto Raptors made it to the NBA Finals 26 years later in 2019. By accumulating 45 runs over the course of the series, the Blue Jays scored the highest number of runs of any one series winning team in World Series history. Only the series losing 1960 New York Yankees accumulated more runs, 55, in a series. Coincidentally, that series also ended on a walk-off home run. Topic: <laughs> Composite box. 1993 World Series 4 to 2 Toronto Blue Jays AL over Philadelphia Phillies NL Topic Broadcasting Game 6 October 23rd is to date the last major league baseball game to be televised on CBS Sean McDonough play -by -play and Tim McCarver color commentary and himself a former Phillies broadcaster called the action for CBS. The following season, Major League Baseball entered into a revenue-sharing joint venture with ABC and NBC called the Baseball Network, but that joint venture was cancelled after two seasons, and by 1996, Fox took over the broadcasting rights to MLB games. CBS Andrea Joyce became the first woman to co-host alongside Pat O'Brien a World Series. Serving as field reporters for CBS were Leslie Visser in the Blue Jays dugout and Jim Gray in the Phillies dugout. The national radio broadcast was also provided by CBS, with Vin Scully and Johnny Bench on the call. Locally, the series was called on WOGLAM in Philadelphia by Harry Carlos, Richie Ashburn, Chris Wheeler, Andy Musser, and Gary Maddox and on CJCLAM in Toronto by Jerry Howarth and Tom Cheek. Cheek's famous call of the Carter home run, "'Touch em all Joe, you'll never hit a bigger home run in your life' lives on in Blue Jays folklore. The 1993 series was Richie Ashburn's last as a Phillies broadcaster, as he died in 1997. Andy Musser also called his last World Series as a member of the Phillies broadcast team. He retired in 2001 and died 11 years later. Tom Cheek never called another postseason game in his role as voice of the Blue Jays, from which he retired in 2005 prior to his death from brain cancer. Game 6 also marked Johnny Bench's final broadcast for CBS Radio after nine years he would be replaced on CBS Radio's World Series broadcasts by Jeff Torborg, while Harry Carlos would not call another World Series until 2008. Carlos later died in 2009 prior to a game at Nationals Park in Washington, D.C. Chris Wheeler continued to call games for the Phillies until being released in 2014 and Jerry Howarth continued to call Blue Jays games, moving into the primary play-by-play -play position following the death of Cheek, until his retirement before the 2018 season. 
Howarth would return to call postseason games when the Blue Jays qualified in 2015 and 2016, where they were eliminated in the ALCS both years. Topic: The Joe Carter home run calls. CBS Radio with Vin Scully. Fastball is hit to left field down the line in the corner. Home run. Joe Carter who took the 2 and 0 pitch for a strike right down the middle hits the 2 and 1 sick pitch over the left field wall and the Toronto Blue Jays come back with 3 in the bottom of the ninth inning to become the world champions yet again. The final score, Toronto 8, Philadelphia 6, CJCLAM Radio in Toronto by Tom Cheek, Joe has had his moments. Trying to lay off that ball, low to the outside part of the plate, he just went after one. Two balls and two strikes on him. Here's the pitch on the way. A swing and a belt. Left field, way back, Blue Jays win it. The Blue Jays are World Series champions, as Joe Carter hits a three-run home run in the ninth inning and the Blue Jays have repeated as World Series champions. Touch em all, Joe, you'll never hit a bigger home run in your life, WOGLAM Radio in Philadelphia by Harry Carlos, the 2-2 pitch, line drive in deep left, this ball is out of here. Three-run home run, Joe Carter, and the Toronto Blue Jays are the world champions of baseball for the second straight year. A three-run home run in the bottom of the ninth by Joe Carter who's being mobbed at home plate, CBS Television. Sean McDonough, now the 2-2. Well hit down the left field line. Way back and gone. Joe Carter with a three-run homer. The winners and still world champions, the Toronto Blue Jays. Topic. Music 95 South remixed their local hit, Woot There It Is, turning into a special tribute to the Phillies. It is often confused with, Woomp There It Is, by Tag Team, however, the songs are distinctly different. Toronto rapper Choclair refers to Joe Carter's walk off home run in his 1999 song, Let's Ride. On July 29, 2015, Toronto rapper Drake released a diss track against Philadelphia rapper Meek Mill entitled, Back to Back. The cover of the diss track features a picture of Joe Carter, just after hitting the series' clinching home run. <laughs> Other media Roger Angel's review of the series in The New Yorker was entitled, Oh, what a lovely war. Topic Notes Topic See also nineteen ninety three Japan series.